Hello Year 7, this is Mr Tupling and in this lesson we're going to think about improving your descriptive writing skills. Your do now task is to look at the image on the screen and I'd like you to write down five adjectives that you would use to describe it. Your challenge is to think of synonyms for each word. So once you've written the five down, can you think of a more ambitious word with a similar meaning that you could use? So for instance, if you've written Rocky down, could you add craggy or rugged as a more challenging synonym? Maybe about 60 seconds to do that. So let's look at some of the adjectives that you might have chosen. On the screen is some which I decided for the picture. I've got fresh, mountainous, remote, deserted, steep, craggy, peaceful, spectacular. So the first thing I need to remember in a good description is I'm going to be using lots of adjectives and they're going to be lots of interesting, hopefully ambitious adjectives to make my description interesting. What do these images represent and why do you think they're important in a description? I'll give you 30 seconds just to think about that. So I'll give you some time to think. Hopefully what you've realised is each of those images represents one of our five senses. Hearing, smelling, touching, tasting and seeing. Why are these important in a description? Well, in a good description we'll be giving information that helps the reader not just picture, not just see the scene, but also hear what's in the scene, smell what would be in the scene if they were there, touch and possibly taste. So what I'd like you to do now is plan some of the five senses you'd use to describe the image we looked at at the beginning of the lesson. I've already started it off for what you would see and smell and for what you could taste. Can you now think of at least one further example for each of the senses to describe that picture? And again, I'll give you about 30, 40 seconds to jot down some ideas.
So let's think about what you might have written down. Again, if you feel you've not been given enough time to do the activity, just pause the video, complete the activity, and then restart it. So let's see what ideas we might have thought of for this image. Well, if we look, we might have thought about the mountains, but we've got in the distance a very a blue oval lake, uh, and around it it's ringed by a forest. Smells, well, we said the smell of yourself from climbing, but there would also be the sort of piney forest smells. Touch, we might be able to touch the rocks, the rough feeling of the rocks, and the feeling of the breeze on your face. We may hear the wind whistling, or we may hear birds screeching in the distance. Taste, well, we might be able to taste the earth or the freshness of the air. So, we've thought of two things we need to include in our description, adjectives and the five senses. The next thing we would want to include is some of the words that are on the screen there. We would like to use similes, metaphors, alliteration and imagery. These will all add more detail to our description and make it more interesting to the reader. And that's the purpose of a description, to help the reader visualise it, but to keep them interested by our writing. This next activity is just to get you to remind yourself of what each of those words mean. So could you look at the definitions and can you pair up the correct definition for simile, metaphor, alliteration and imagery? Again, I'll give you 30 seconds to do it. If you need longer than that, pause the video and go back to it when you're ready. Let's check then that you understand the meaning of each of these four terms. The first one is a simile. And that compares two things saying one thing is like something else. So for instance, the room was as hot as an oven, or the room was like an oven. It's comparing the heat of an oven to the heat of the room, and it helps the reader understand how hot it felt to be inside that room. The second thing is a metaphor. A metaphor does the same job as a simile, but instead of saying like, it uses the word is. One thing literally is something else. This is just for effect. It's still doing the same job of trying to show how two things are very similar. So for instance, the room was an oven. By saying that, I'm drawing attention to how hot it was inside the room. And it was very hot, like the inside of an oven. It's more interesting if I use that metaphor, and it helps, again, the reader feel what it's like inside the room. Alliteration is repeating the consonant sound at the beginning of a group of words to create a memorable effect. This is a nice device to use in your writing, because it makes certain phrases jump out and create some interest for the reader. Obviously our last one is imagery, and that just means words or phrases that are designed to create a picture in the reader's mind. And obviously in a description, that's the most important thing we're doing. We're choosing words and phrases, thinking about the senses, thinking about metaphors and similes, comparing things, all with the same objective, of helping the reader visualise and experience the scene we're describing. Let's now practice these language techniques to, de to describe the image we've looked at from the beginning of the lesson. I'd like you to devise a simile, a metaphor, some alliteration and some imagery to describe the image. Again, I'll give you about a minute 
but if you need longer, just pause the video. These are the examples that I thought of to use in the description. The simile I used was the mountains were like cakes topped with icing. And there I was comparing the snow at the top of the mountain to icing. The metaphor I used to describe the sky was the sky was a blue plate piled high with fluffy mashed potato. And again there I'm comparing the blueness of the sky to a plate and then the clouds to fluffy mashed potato. So each of those is giving a very strong visual image to the reader. Literation I used the rough ragged rocks repeating the R sound. And finally for imagery I just described the lake and the trees. The green pine trees fringed a clear blue lake. So you can see that each of those techniques adds lots of information to help visualise and picture the scene, but also creates a lot of interest. The next technique we're going to talk about in a good description is zooming. Zooming simply means that we zoom in on parts of the image and describe those in really thorough detail, possibly devoting a whole paragraph just to one aspect. So for instance, the walker's appearance, we might spend a whole paragraph describing their outfit and their appearance. So what I'd like you to do is think about which five areas of the image would you zoom in and write a detailed paragraph about. Again, I'll give you a bit of time to think about that and make your decisions. So I'll give you another 40 seconds to come up with some ideas and if you need more time, just pause the video. OK, let's think about some good choices to zoom in on to make our description thorough, detailed and interesting. The first thing I would zoom in on and describe is the weather, what the weather's like, the cloud patterns. Next, I might move on to describe the mountains and their appearance. Next, I might go on to describe the lake and the forest that surrounds it. I could describe the walker and their appearance. Finally, I might want to describe this rocky area 
where the walker is standing. We can use our zooms to structure our piece of descriptive writing. So each zoom could be a separate paragraph. And this makes our writing varied and interesting. So paragraph one could be about the weather and the sky. Paragraph two could describe the mountains in the distance. Paragraph three could focus on the lake and the forest around it. Paragraph four could be all about the person, the walker and their appearance. And finally, paragraph five could just describe the rocky pathway that they were stood on. A good thing to do at the end of the description is to show some sort of change, some sort of shift. And the ending could possibly describe the same scene with the weather changed or the time of day being later in the day when it was getting dark. That creates some interest at the end and a sense that your piece of writing has finished. Let's now see how a writer has used the different techniques to make a detailed description based on the image we've been looking at. On the screen is a paragraph and I want you to see how they've used alliteration, sounds, smells, touch, metaphors and similes. And also think about the effect. Your challenge is to think about the types of sentence they've used. This has helped the description. I'll read it through and I'm going to give you couple of minutes to think about what techniques have been used. Spectacular, a bright day, high up in the majestic mountains. A brisk breeze whistles around the ragged rocks as the sun beats down on the green carpet of fragrant forest and the oval mirror of the lake. In the distance, mountains are capped with snow like icing dripping down the sides of a cake. Above, fresh bracing air is filled with the screeches of hunting birds. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about that passage and pick out some of the techniques. Again, if you need more time, just pause the video. So let's see how these different techniques have been used. Let's start with alliteration. So we can see a few phrases that have been used and they're quite interesting and memorable. I've got an adjective with an noun. Majestic mountains, brisk breeze and fragrant forest. Next we've got adjectives that appeal to our hearing, sounds. So we've got the whistling of the wind around the rocks and we've got the screeches of hunting birds. 
So we can imagine the sounds if we were in that scene. Next we can see that words have been used that appeal to the sense of smell. We have fragrant forest. And fragrant refers to something that is a perfume, a strong scent. And the air is called fresh. So we've got there two adjectives helping us to imagine the smells in this scene. The writers used metaphors to help us visualise the scene. Firstly, the forest is a green carpet covering the bottom of the valley and the lake is an oval mirror because of its shape and the fact it's reflecting light. Finally, the writer has used a simile to describe the mountains in the distance and to describe the snow they're capped with. They're described like icing dripping down the sides of a cake. As we can all visualise what icing on a cake looks like, we can easily visualise what that scene would look like. The challenge was to think about the different types of sentences that have been used in the passage. And you should have noticed that there's a variety of sentences. The first sentence is a one-word sentence, an exclamative sentence, which expresses the emotion of the writer. They think the scene is wonderful, spectacular, and that short one-word sentence starts the writing in an interesting way. A lot of the other sentences are complex sentences, using subordinate clauses to add extra information. So a lot of these begin with a preposition, in the distance or above. And the more complex sentences you can use, the more information you can include in your paragraph. To finish this lesson, I'd like you to think about what we've learned makes a successful description. Can you come up with six tips for writing a successful description and write them down on your paper? I'll give you a minute and then we'll review what you've written down. So you've just had about a minute. Again, if you need more time, just pause the video and then come back and see what ideas we've come up with. Let's review what we should have in our list of success criteria. Firstly, we definitely need the five senses. So in our writing, we need to be appealing through our choice of words to the different senses. We're not simply going to describe what somebody would see in the scene. We're going to think about what they'd hear, what they'd smell, what they'd taste, and what they'd touch. We're going to use adjectives because they're going to use, add lots of detail to our nouns. We're going to think about comparisons, metaphors and similes. So comparing aspects of our scene to other things that may be similar to them. So for instance, the lake and the shape of the lake, which is like the oval mirror. Remember, metaphors uh, says something is something else. Similes uses the word like or as. A lot of our writing is just going to be imagery. It will be sort of writing to describe what can be seen. We might use some alliteration to add some extra interest. Not on that list is thinking about our sentences and trying to vary our sentences, how we start them and the length of them. So maybe starting our paragraph with a short sentence 
making sure we have lots of complex sentences with subordinate clauses with lots of information. Finally, you might want to think about the structure of our writing, how we begin it, how we end it. And as I gave you a tip earlier on, end it with some change in the scene. The final paragraph could be the same scene later in the day, or if the weather conditions have changed, from the tranquil weather conditions at the beginning, maybe a storm has started and you describe some of the scene now with that new weather condition. I hope that's been useful Year 7 and I hope what you've learnt in this lesson will support you with your writing which you'll be completing on some learning or in your work pack.